Next speaker is Saoirse Tracy from the University College of Dublin. And she's going to talk about uh, exploring the rise of the sphere, imaging roots all interaction using X ray computed tomography. Welcome. Thank you, Matthew. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for having me. So, just a quick plug if anyone would like to join the IPPN um, root phenotyping working group, please feel free to um, send an email to that email there. Um, so thank you for the introduction, and today I'm going to talk about um, my research so far, which to date has been at the Houndsfield facility for rhizosphere research at the University of Nottingham. So I did my PhD there and my postdoc. Um, I've recently moved to UCD when I'm um, now setting up my own group. So the research I'll talk about today will have all been carried out at um, Nottingham. So talk about how I use um, X-ray CT to visualise plant roots and soil, the root imaging challenge and some of the ways Nottingham tried to overcome uh, that challenge, how I've applied X-ray CT to rhizosphere studies, so talk about phenotyping of course, and uh, my subject of my PhD was compaction, so there'll be a bit of work on that, and soil hydraulic properties. So I talked about this, this was my postdoc project in detail in the root phenotyping meeting yesterday, so if anyone wants to know more detail about that project, um, please come up and um, talk to me. So some of the methods I've used to look at roots um, over the years have involved either drilling soil cores, sieving soil, um, putting them in columns, growing plants in pots, root washing, root scanning like Winrhizo, confocal microscopy and agar plating. And all of these methods um, have pros and cons. So these four here are great um, because they involve um, looking at roots in soil, but typically they're very destructive and if with the root washing you might wash away the information that you have in the soil um, and these two methods um, give you um, more information but without the use of soil so it's hard to infer um, field responses um, without the use of the heterogeneous medium of soil so really to try and overcome some of the challenges of root phenotyping there needed to be another type of technique which allowed us to look at roots and soil non-destructively. So this is when X-ray CT um, came in um, and it overcomes some of these um, challenges because um, it's no longer limited by the fact that soil is opaque. So using X-rays we can see inside the pot, it's non-destructive, um, it gives us 3D images and it allows us to look at root functions that are dynamic in space and time. So in a typical research X-ray CT scanner, this is what you would see. Um, so it's unlike, it's kind of flipped, it's not like the medical CT scanner. Um, so in each scanner you would have the X-ray gun, so the X-ray source here, the stage. So this freely rotates 360 degrees. In this image here we've got a glass rod with a uh, soil aggregate glued onto the top. Um, so the X-rays would pass through the sample, whatever it is you want to um, scan. So the, the great thing about X-ray CT is it gives you the internal structure of anything you want to scan. The X-rays pass through the sample, hit the detector here. So this is the really crucial part of the whole scanner because how sensitive the detector is or how good the detector is determines the um, image quality. Um, and each scan is made up of image slices which then there's the reconstruction stage which knits all of those 3D, um, 2D image slices together to give you that 3D volume. And if you were to scan a pot of soil with a plant in, you get an image similar to this. So this was um, a maize plant, one of the first scans we did with the first scan, a scanner at Nottingham. Um, and you can see that the images are in grayscale. So the black areas are the least dense parts of the sample, so the air, the soil pores, um, the grey matrix in between is the soil, so the mineral part of the soil, but also the organic part. And then these white bits will be the most dense part, so the sand or the quartz grains. And you can see that the roots really um, fall in the middle. So for each scan we get a histogram. And typically, um, traditionally you'd have two peaks. So you'd have a solid peak and an air peak and root, the root material would fall somewhere in the middle. So trying to segment out the roots um, does prove a challenge based on the fact that the density of a root would be very similar to, say, the organic component of the soil. So this is a challenge um, we've had to overcome. So 
the previous studies that used x-ray CT to look at roots maybe in the 80s and the 90s, they were limited to really um, looking at roots with really thick roots in sandy soils to enhance that contrast between the soil and the roots or at low moisture content. Um, but really, like most things, as the technology has improved, the sensitivity of the detectors have got better, that with the contrast between the roots and the background soil material has improved. So with the new scanners, we've been able to see improvements. And also um, Nottingham developed some in-house software called RootTrack, um, which also helps set us segment out and pick out the root material from um, the soil and the pore space. And this is one of the first um, movies of mine. Um, so as I said, my PhD was looking at the um, response of roots to soil compaction. And the first scanner we had, um, the main limitation of X-ray CT is sample diameter. So the smaller the sample diameter, the higher the resolution. So from the beginning of my PhD, we looked at seedlings of tomatoes. So we could have a very small pots and then get high resolution. So these were two 10 day old um, tomato plants grown on clay loam soil. And you can see that they were grown at different bulk densities and the plant that um, was grown in compacted soil had very few, uh, much less lateral roots, attained a, um, a shorter depth and the roots were thicker. So um, the consequences this would have for productivity or if we're thinking about um, field crops lodging um, would be significant. Um, ABA, the plant hormone abscisic acid, was seen um, suggested to be involved heavily in maintaining root growth in suboptimal soil conditions. So another experiment I did um, for my PhD was looking at the response of um, ABA mutants to um, root architecture. So in these two images we have wild type, you can see plenty of laterals, the plant looks relatively normal for the growth stage, this was only about 14 days whereas Natabolus is an ABA deficient mutant and you can see that the root architecture is um, starkly different which would have then consequences for um, the ongoing growth of the plant and this project was in collaboration with um, Ian Dodd in Lancaster to characterise the ABA um, analysis as well. So because X-ray CT is non-destructive you can scan the sample uh, the same pot more than once so this was um, a scan was taken every day for 10 days, again on a tomato seedling, so it lets you calculate um, root elongation rates. You can see the timing of the lateral roots, the location of where the lateral roots emerge, and because also these images don't really show it, but you've got simultaneously as well the soil information. So you could um, answer questions about do lateral roots emerge into um, a more porous part of the soil or a more dense part of the soil. Um, but looking at the elongation rates um, for this experiment was really interesting because you could have the different bulk density treatments or you could infer like a plough pan in the pot um, to look at how the roots are able to overcome uh, these soil challenges that we're giving them. And as I mentioned, the um, software root track, which is freely available um, and open source, um, that has gone through several iterations um, of improvement and one of the latest ones was looking at being able to track. Um, so this pot was had three wheat plants in and root track was able to segment out the three separate plants. Um, so this then allows you to use the technique to look at competition studies and um, how roots interact. Um, and one area I want to um, use this technique for in Ireland is looking at um, pasture mixtures. So rather than just growing perennial mono, um, monoculture, having legumes and herbs and seeing how they um, interact ecologically um, would be possible with this technique. So as we're at a um, phenotyping conference, I just thought I'd talk about some of the traits that have been put forward um, for root phenotyping. So this is a list, um, it's not exhaustive, that was put together by the two papers at the bottom there. Um, so you can see there's several options that you could measure. Some of the main ones I've measured um, for my roots was the convex hull, which is not perfect, but it's like almost saying the volume of soil that the, the root's able to explore. So like throwing a bag over the roots and giving you the volume. The um, width and the depth is really interesting because as long as your width is narrower than your pot, then it, the plant isn't pot bound because pot studies, we have that limitation that if they become pot bound, you have artifacts. The centroid, 
to the center of mass of a root system was really useful for me because of compaction. You tend to have shallower roots, which then in the field you could infer would lead to um, increased likelihood of lodging. This was um, my postdoc, and I'll just run through it really quickly because I'm running out of time. Um, so if anyone wants to know more detail, but it was in collaboration with the University of Southampton. So my role at Nottingham was to um, scan pots of soil and look at water uptake and um, develop new models for uh, water movement through soil. And this is one of the first um, videos that we generated to look at the distribution of water and soil. So the water's been falsely coloured blue. So immediately you can see that the distribution of water and soil is very um, heterogeneous. It tends to cling around the aggregate. So the distribution of the aggregates in the soil structure would determine really how easily the water can flow through the soil and then how roots can take it up or um, the micro how the microbes are um, dealing with anoxic conditions. So this view just gives you like a root's eye view or a worm's eye view of really the distribution of the water in the soil. And then this project involves several scales developing these new models for root water uptake. So we started off with just looking at the soil and characterizing how the water moves through the soil. Then we brought in a single root, then a full root system, and then a mature root system. So this final um, part, I'm still analyzing. Um, it was the last project I did when I was at Nottingham in these large pots in the, um, in the Hounsfield facility. So these pots were 20 centimeters diameter by a meter um, long. This is the robot that takes it to the, the large X-ray CT scanner they have at Nottingham. Um, it looked at two weak cultivars. So Zebedee, which has a high drought tolerance, and Psi-19, which is low drought tolerance. These were um, characterized at the um, field trials in Rothamsted. And it was to look at the effect that the root architecture would have on potentially this drought tolerance. So the pots now inside the um, the X-ray CT scanner, it'll do its 360. That was the big black panel there was the detector, the X-ray gun's just down there, and then the scan would be complete. And, and again, to try and make this model as robust as possible, we've included extra bits of data, so the WinRISO to validate the segmented roots and moisture probes that were attached, uh, inserted into the um, soil core. This is one of the first root segmentations of a um, that we've got from this project. So the, the root depth in this was 80 centimetres. And just to um, quickly finish, um, I've mainly been looking at um, roots for my project, but um, one of the last um, experiments I did at Nottingham was with Alison Ferguson and Zoe Wilson and Jose Fernandez, who are in the audience, and we were using X-ray CT to um, look at floral staging in Arabidopsis to try and avoid the fact that we have to dissect um, Arabidopsis buds. And another thing we looked at was um, barley spikes, and the great thing about this is we could um, characterise the length without even doing a scan. We just had to put the um, barley tiller in the CT scanner, turn the X-rays on, you get a radiograph, and you can take the measurement and see inside exactly what um, stage it's at without having to unsheath um, the tiller. So there's opportunities for that as well. Um, just one last plug is um, at Dublin, I'm setting up my own group, so I will um, soon have a Vitamex, a GE Phoenix scanner. And the first experiment for that will be looking at um, the effect of seedbed on field bean establishment. So if anyone has any potential PhD candidates that they know of, please come talk to me. And it will be UCD as an IPPN member, so it'll be available to use as well. So just to summarize, by using X-ray CT, you can get 3D um, volumes non-destructively, which can be used in root phenotyping, looking at water, movement through soil, um, so hopefully come overcoming some of those challenges. And that's my acknowledgement slide. Thank you. Sorry for going over. Thank you very much. You. If there's one very quick question, I'll take it because we're a little over time. Yes, Simon. Thanks. I was very interested in the tomography of the developing inflorescence. Was that a dry, was that dry plant tissue or, or living plant tissue? Um, we tried several um, agents to try and improve the contrast, but actually we found that actually they didn't really because 
the uh, density of the influence was quite similar anyway. Um, so it was live and the aim was we didn't want it to desiccate because as soon as it desiccates then you get the movement in the images. That's great, so they're live, non-destructive aspects. Oh, but they were detached. Detached. We didn't put the whole plant in, we were just detaching to put in. Could you do it on a... If you could keep the plant still and the problem would be the field of view. So you, the smaller the field of view, the higher the resolution. So it might be better to detach to get a smaller field of view. Great, thanks very much. Okay, thank you.